Well, I'm thankful this morning that I'm able to stand up here and to look upon God's Word and uh, read some of His Word because it is true. And uh, I want to talk to you a little bit this morning about a prophet by the name of Elisha. Mm -hmm. Very, very uh, strong man in the Lord. He, uh, in fact, in the business, he got a double portion. And right. So we'll, we'll see some of that this morning. But turn your Bibles to the book of Second Kings. We're going to be in the fifth chapter of Second Kings. All right, chapter 5, verse 1, we see uh, it starts out with a man by the name of Naaman. And Naaman was a very valiant soldier for the king, but he had a problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, his problem was bad. It was something that the king couldn't take care of. It was something that... Uh, nobody that he knew of could take care of it. It was an unhealable disease called leprosy. Right. But all in all, he was still able to go into battle, and he had just got back from Israel, uh, and they had uh, uh, had a little scrimmage there. And uh, we see here in verse five, uh, one of uh, chapter five. Now, Naaman, captain of the, the host of the king of Israel was a great man with his master, the king, and honor, honorable, because by him the Lord had given deliverance to Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was left. Mm -hmm. And this morning, as I read this and think about this, but he was. And we see ourselves this morning, and we can apply that to ourselves, but we are. Mm -hmm. And so many times we have problems and uh, we uh, cry out unto the Lord to help us, but he didn't know our Lord. Uh, but by chance, while he was down there fighting, they took this little maid captive. Mm -hmm. And uh, she believed in the prophets there and what they taught. And she was very strong. And so we're going to see here this morning uh, about this this morning because of her attitude towards her captors. And we this this morning ought to be the, this might be a good attitude for us all to have uh, uh, about our enemies. We need to, we need to pray for our enemies. We need to uh uh, ask the Lord to help them and, and to, if we can, help them. And this is what the maid did. So here in verse 2, And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid. Mm -hmm. And she waited on, the, on Naaman's wife. So she was there with her, and she was doing the things that... She knew about Naaman's condition. And so one day she was talking to Naaman's wife, and she said, and she said unto her mistress, Would God, my Lord, were with the prophets that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. Amen. This this morning is a something this morning that we need to remember as the little maid remember. If we see someone that is sick in sin, we need to pray for them or we need to tell someone else about them and they can help us pray about this because this is what happened here this morning or this that day that the the message that she left with Naaman's wife took effect that Amen. night. Because listen, in verse four, here it says, and one went in and told his lord, the king, saying, Thus and thus said the maid that is in the land of Israel, that was of the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go to, go and I will send a letter. Now listen, 
He did stammer and stumble about this because he he thought the world of Naaman, mm -hmm. and he he took this as being truthful, and he immediately said here, go and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him 10 talents of silver, 6,000 pieces of gold, and 10 changes of rain. Mm -hmm. So he was going prepared to give whoever could help him all their heart's desire as far as riches was. Right. And we see that this, this caused a little, uh, discussion later on in the lesson here but all of this he took with him and he and in verse 6 and he brought the letter to the king of Israel saying now when this letter is come unto thee behold I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee now this is the letter that the king got was in, in Israel that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy so he wrote to the king, and he said, now here's the thing, and we just had a war down in there, and we took some of them up, but here's the thing. He's got leprosy, and I want you, king, to heal him. That was, that was, the, that was the, 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 what the king thought of in the letter, and he it tore him all to pieces because he was afraid of the king there, and he knew that this was, this was to make war with him again. Mm. And so he says here, and it came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter that he rent his clothes and said, am I God to kill and to make alive that this man does send unto me to recover a man of this, his leprosy? Wherefore, consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. So he was telling the people, I pray, I, mm -hmm. I, I'm telling you the truth, he's wanting to have more war with me. This is giving him an excuse because I can't heal the man. Mm -hmm. And he says here that, that uh, he rent his clothes, and uh, he was all, all tore up all about this. And, and, and this, is, this is natural for a person that... Uh, has authority over another one and he tells him to do something that's impossible because it was impossible mm -hmm. at that time to, to heal leprosy. Now there had probably been some heal, but it was by the prophets and all. Amen. So here we see here, so after all of this was uh, uh, happened in verse 8, and it was so when Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Amen. Now, if I can find it real easy, I want to show you something here over a couple of chapters back where that this happened with the... Uh, uh, Elijah and Elisha. Uh, here it says here, uh, I'm, I'm on it and it came to pass when they were going over that Elisha said, I'm, I'm in 2 9. And it came to pass when they were going over that Elisha said to uh, Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken. Away, take it away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and he said that thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked that the, the behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder and Elisha, Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven and Elijah saw, Elisha saw it and he cried, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen Thereof. And he saw him no more, 
and he took hold of his own clothing and rent them in two pieces. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan and he took the mantle and Elijah that, that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the water, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. So Amen. This, this, this here really strengthened Elisha. Mm -hmm. and, and we'll see these things as we, if you wanted to read the first five or six chapters of this, all the things that he did there in just a little short time. He raised the dead, uh, a child, and, and all of these things. But most of all, he he is going to do something miraculous here this in, in this reading this morning. Amen. So <clears throat> let me let me look at it here. And name we can. Uh, and it was so when Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes. That he, they, that, uh, he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariots and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. Amen. Now he's coming in all his glory and splendor and all of this, and he's expecting something real great. Right, Elisha, and you know sometimes I, as I, I was reading this and studying this, we're going to see that Elisha didn't even come out. He didn't right. come out. It wasn't it wasn't that big thing of Elisha. Right. But he sent his servant. Here's what happened. And Elisha sent him a message unto him, saying, "Go and wash in Jordan." Let me go back. Let me go back. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariots and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times. Now, Brother Larry has preached a little bit here in one of the messages about the number seven. You see all through this, these works and all, you see this number seven come up. Mm -hmm. But here he said, You go wash in that Jordan. Now, Jordan was a muddy little river. Right. Dirty water. And so this man, Naaman, was amazed. And he says here uh, in verse 11, But Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hands over the place and recover the leper. He's what he thought. Right. Listen, he didn't even come out. Now listen this this morning. He was he was he was sending him a a a, 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 a great thing this morning by telling his servant to go out there. But listen, he this man here did not have any faith at all in God that, right. that, that Elisha knew. He was another, he served another God altogether, statues and all that stuff. But he, he got so upset, he got so upset with the, the message that Elisha sent him that he was ready to go home. Mm -hmm. Because first of all, he says, Naaman was wroth and went away in verse 11 and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come out. And so down here in, after he had told him to go into the, this little old river Jordan, he knew about it. And in verse 12, he said, And not Abana and Parathon rivers of Damascus. These two rivers, he knew, they were clean, they were clear. And he said, I could have gone way down there and done that. And I didn't have to come all the way down here. So here he says here, are not Aban and Fermar rivers of Damascus better than all the water of Israel? Why I, may I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in rage. Mm -hmm. And this is a good way this morning for, you know, we don't need to get in this condition uh, ourselves when we have 
someone praying for us or someone coming up and saying, I've been praying for you, and you, you look at them and say, well, it ain't doing no good. It ain't no good. Listen, we need to keep a calm and a cool head and stay normal because, mm -hmm. listen, God has so many ways that he can work, and he does things in mysterious ways so many times, and this is one of them. He's showing us here this morning this action that was, was fixing to happen. So here he's, he's comparing these two waters, and then in verse 13, and his servant came near, and his servants came near, and spake unto him, that's the name, and said, My father, if the prophet, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? <laughs> How much rather then when he said to thee, wash and be clean? And so, you know, uh, that's, 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 good, that's good information and that's, good, that's good advice. And, and, and listen, they were talking to a, a, a high ranking officer, but they, but listen, he said, then, after he, after he considered this, he said, well, I'll try it. Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Amen. Now, this thing here, it gets, it turns, and of course, I know you've read this, but I uh, kind of lean for it. But things changed after after he had his cleansing and all this, and he seen what had happened. So he said, and he returned to the man of God. He and all his company and came and stood before him, and he said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth, but in Israel. Amen. And therefore, I pray thee, take a blessing of thy servant. Now here we see him offering him money. And he had all kinds of money he's carrying with him and everything. And uh, what did Elisha say? <laughs> but he said, as the Lord lives, in verse 16, before whom I stand, I will receive none. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. Amen. So there's a place over in Acts 8, I believe it is, and there was a man by the name of Simeon, or Simon, whatever, and he was a, a, a trickster, and he had tricked the people into uh, believing his religion was the thing. And so Paul of them come down and, and preached preached to him, and, and, and the Bible says that he received it. He Amen. received him himself. And he went on and followed them. And he seen them laying their hands on other people and the, and, 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 and the Holy Spirit, they accepted the, the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And so he come up to them and says, hey, I need to be doing that too. How much Will it cost me? Mm -hmm. Let me give you. Let me give you so much money that I can do this thing too. Well, this is a, 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 a same, about the same as mm -hmm. uh, uh, Elijah. Elisha had said this. And he refused to do it because, listen, uh, he had it all. He could have had a, a mountain full of gold because he was he was he was God's man. But listen, in verse eighteen. And in this, the Lord, let's see, let me see if I'm right. And Naaman says, shall there not be, I pray that you give, okay. In verse 18, in this thing, the Lord pardoned thy servant. And when thy, my master goeth into the house of Remnant to worship there, and he leaned on his hand, and I bowed myself in the house of Remnant, when I bowed down myself in the house of Remnant, the Lord pardon thy servant of this thing. And so what he had done, he had offered man, uh, the, uh, the, let me get my tongue in gear here again, Elijah, Elisha refused this, and so he said, let me give you, give your servant some of this stuff. 
two mules, and I think we'll see it in a minute. Mm -hmm. But anyway, this is what he's saying here. And in verse 19, and he said unto them, Go in peace. So he departed from him a little ways. But now here's 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 another thing. Right. Ge Giza, Ge Gehaz, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, said, Behold, my master has spared Naaman, the Syrian, and not receiving at his hand that which is he brought him. Brought, but as the Lord liveth, I will run after him and take somewhat of him. Right. So he's going to disobey his <clears throat> and do things against his uh, servant there, and, and he knows it's wrong, and he mm -hmm. tries to keep it a secret. And you, you, you can even read back in this uh, guys of Gizna, he was very active with Elisha, and he did a lot of works for Elisha. Right. And, but now he's gone money crazy. That's what it is because he's right. Not with it. So. Uh, in verse 20, 21, so Gideon followed after Naaman, and when Naaman saw him running after him, he lighted down from the chariot to meet him and said, Is it all well? And he said, All is well. <laughs> My master has sent me, saying, Behold, even now there be come to me from among a mount Ephraim two young men of the sons of the prophets. Give them, I pray thee, a talent of silver and two changes of garments. He lied to him. Right. He lied to him. And so, Naaman said, Be content. Take two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver in two bags with two changes of garments and laid them upon his uh, two, uh, laid them upon two of his servants and they buried them before him. When he came to the tower, he took them from their hands and bestowed them in the house or hid them. And he let the men go and they departed. Mm -hmm. Now, but he went in and stood before his master. And Elisha said unto him, Whence comest thou, Giza? And he said, Thy servant went to in no weather, went no weather. And he said unto him, when, when not my heart, and he said unto him, went not my heart with thee when the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee? Is it a time to receive money and to receive garments and olive yards and vineyards and sheep and oxen and manservant and maidservants? The leprosy, therefore, of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed forever. And he went out from his presence a leper as white as snow. There you go. And so we see here this morning that everything is not worth money. And there's nothing worth money. Right. Money is the, is the root of all evil. The love of it is the root of all evil. And that's what he had there. And, and uh, uh, he, he wanted some. And of course, uh, uh, Elisha, uh, he just, he was a different altogether. Mm -hmm. And so this uh, thing that he received from Elijah, it, uh, it made him so much stronger. And, and if you read, read on over in, 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 uh, this, in this chapter here, you'll see so many things that he did for different people. And he raised the dead, like I said, and uh, one of them was a little small child. And uh, did so many things else. So this this morning is uh, the conclusion of uh, this uh, uh, thing, uh, this uh, thing, this lesson. And I, I, I hope it's something here that I read will get you encouraged to be bad. Uh, uh, a little bit closer, and it will be a thing that you will remember. And when you remember it. You remember that the devil is always knocking, and he's mm -hmm. always giving, and he's always showing to you things that uh, you won't. Mm -hmm. Because listen, <laughs> we're in the flesh. We're in the flesh, people. Amen. And we are so easily tempted. And if we don't watch ourselves, we'll, we'll be 
hoodwinked by the devil. And that's just like a Simeon was. He had hoodwinked the whole people and they give him money, they accepted him as a the priest and all this stuff. But you need to you need to take this uh, lesson in consideration. Think about uh, as you go down life road and there's always that little thing there that's mm -hmm. waiting for you and there's a bush a uh, devil behind a lot of bushes that you don't see until you do it when it is it's too late sometimes. So uh, I thank you for listening to me and I, I hope that what I've read will be a, a great blessing to you and, and uh, we ask that you pray for us if you want. If we ever have another time to teach that uh, we will be able to study and, and read something. Thank you so much. Amen.